Moshe. Hey, Shalom, welcome. How are you doing? Yeah, it's great. great to be here. Yeah. Hey, listen, is that a fantastic sight? The center of the universe. I love it. You know, the, West, the Western Wall. Yeah. You know, many visitors think that it's the holiest site for the Jewish people. But actually, what gives it its holiness is its close proximity to the holiest spot for the Jewish people, which is the Temple Mount, where the Holy Temple once stood. And if people are excited about getting close to the spot where the Temple once stood by being at the Western Wall, well, hold on, because we're going to get a lot closer right now. Let's go. In 1967, when Jerusalem was liberated, archaeologists started to explore this area. They were excited to find ancient tunnels running adjacent to the Western Wall. Today, thanks to the Western Wall Heritage Foundation, we can explore them too. Shalom, before we go into the tunnels, let's take a look at the topography, okay, the layout of the land. This is what we see today. Here is the Muslim shrine that sits upon the Temple Mount, okay? Now this temple platform is the biggest man-made platform in the world. Herod, he renovated the second temple, and his great work is that he expanded the Temple Mount area, the platform, to twice its size. But let's look at it before there was any platform here. Here, Sholem, this is Mount Moriah. This is the hilltop where Abraham brought Isaac to sacrifice him at the command of God. But what's special about this spot is this is also where God told David, the king of Israel, to build his holy house, the holy temple. Now, it was built by Solomon, his son. But this is the spot, this is the area. The first temple was built by King Solomon. It stood for approximately 400 years. It was destroyed by the Babylonians. The Jews were exiled to Babylon. They came back 70 years later, rebuilt, Ezra rebuilt the second temple. It also stood for approximately 400 years. The Romans destroyed the second temple. The Jews were exiled out of the land of Israel. 1,300 years ago, the Muslims built their shrine on the exact spot of the Holy Temple, and it stands there today. And this is what we see today. The tunnels that we're going to be seeing is this area right here. We're going to be walking along this area in front of the, the Temple Mount platform. You know this rock? You know about this this stone? Yeah. This this stone is very special. And we know that the western wall is made up of these huge stones, heavy stones. This stone has to be the largest of all the stones in the western wall. It's 500 metric tons. It's 41 feet long. It's 10 times bigger than the largest stones that are used in the Egyptian pyramids, and even the modern cranes that we see today, can only lift half its size. It's a mystery how they got it here. Archaeologists of today have certain theories on how they moved it into place. Some of them even said that it was just carved out of the mountain. But we see that that's impossible because we see under it are other rows of stone. But other stones, giant ashlars, were moved with big pulleys oxen and just human sweat and blood this is a big rock over here we have a great model of the second temple period now if we look over here and you see the red that is the western wall today now people think the western wall is the only wall but this whole area with a retaining wall of the Temple Mount platform. 
is a western wall or an eastern wall, a southern wall or northern wall. Although Herod was one of the great builders of all history, expanding the Temple Mount, renovating the Temple, he was appointed king by the Romans, he was not a king of the people, the people hated him, he was a tyrant, he was an extreme paranoid, who history tells us for no reason, other than his paranoia, killed off his two sons and his wife. This is Wilson's Arch here that's still standing today. Let's go take a look at it, how it looks today. This is Wilson's Arch. This is the arch we saw in the model of the bridge. This is an arch in the bridge that would bring Jews from the upper city of Jerusalem into the Temple Mount area. And what's amazing about this arch is these stones are free hanging. They didn't use mortar or cement to hold them up. They're all held up by pressure for thousands of years. Fantastic engineering feat. We're coming to maybe one of the most special parts of the whole tour, a place called Warren's Gate. We see this area here that was closed up. This is called Warren's Gate. When I told you earlier that we were going to come and get closer to the holiest place on the earth, this is what I meant. This gate led from the Jewish city above onto the Temple Mount, and right in front of us, maybe 50 feet, is where the Holy of Holies stood, where God's presence was manifest. In the Holy of Holies, the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, was only allowed to enter once a year on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement for the Jewish people. In the Holy of Holies, there were five of the holiest objects of the Jewish people. There was the Tablets of Stone, the Staff of Aaron, the Jar of Manna, the Ark of the Covenant, and the actual Torah scroll that was written by Moses himself. And those objects were there during the 400 years of the First Temple era, until the Babylonians came and destroyed the Temple. For our sources and our traditions say those, those, those holy objects were hid, hidden away. And God willing, when we build the Third Temple, it should be soon in our day, we'll bring those, those objects back, God will reveal their hidden places, and we'll go back into the Holy of Holies. Amen. Okay, let's move on. Here we can get a tremendous appreciation to see how long the Western Wall really was underneath or outside of the western side of the Temple Mount. You can see down here this full length. This is not even the full length. This is maybe a half. Shalom. This is definitely not for the claustrophobic. Or for the very tall, either. <laughs> As we go deeper and deeper into the tunnel, we are enveloped in a time far away. We see cisterns used for water, ancient roads built by the Romans, a secret room from the time of the Maccabees, projectiles used in the war against the Romans, and a ritual bath that the priests would use to bathe themselves before they entered the temple plaza to perform the temple service. This is an actual Herodian Road. These are pillars. This was a marketplace left in place for 2,000 years. But as you see, the road ends here. The historians tell us that it's possible that this is the actual time that Herod died when they got to this point, and after that, they didn't want to finance his building project anymore. Do you know? It may be the end of the road for Herod. But this is really the beginning of the road for us and the Jewish people. Because if we look over here to the right, we see the Western Wall has risen above us. And we've come to bedrock, Mount Moriah. Shalom, I want you to touch this, because this is your past. This is our past. Mount Moriah is standing here. This is the spot where God took the first clump of earth and created the first man, Adam. This is where Abraham came to sacrifice his son Isaac. This is where Jacob had the dream of the ladders, seeing the angels going up and down. Not on this exact spot, but 50 feet from here. 100, 150 feet. It was on Mount Moriah that it all happened. The beginning, the beginning of the Jewish people. Herod was an evil tyrant. He was a fantastic builder. 
He built Masada, the great fortress. He built the city of Caesarea. But he didn't build a future for himself. Abraham, by doing acts of kindness, he built the foundations of the Jewish people. And that brings us to you, Shalom. The Aleph base. Those are the building blocks. The Hebrew alphabet is the building blocks of the whole world. The bedrock of the Jewish people. Have. That is the bedrock. And I wish you success in your show, and I hope you teach many, many people. The Hebrew language? The Hebrew alphabet. And we all should just grow together in Torah, in understanding of the world and our direction of life. Moshe, thank you. It's great. Thank you for bringing me.